Hello and welcome. My name is Odo Peter. We are continuing with our course Act 441, Building Climatology. Here's a brief outline of the course we'll be taking. The first topic we'll focus on is climate and its components. This will enable us to understand what the global climate looks like and the climatic systems. The second topic will be climate and building designs. And in this topic, we'll study all the climatic components that are crucial to creating good building designs and to achieve a thermal comfort for occupants within the buildings and also to achieve energy efficient buildings. After that, we'll move to the next topic, which will focus on the Nigerian climate and how to design climate responsive and environmentally friendly buildings within the Nigerian climate. After that, we are going to uh, analyze some passive design strategies that we have come across in the previous topics and uh, we'll look at site planning processes for effective and sustainable site planning. And then at the conclusion of the course, I'm going to offer some tips with regards to sustainable development. So this is just a brief outline of the course. Let's get started. Let's do this. Before I go ahead, dishing out information on to state the objectives of this course. At the conclusion of this course, I'm hoping that we would have improved our skills in the following aspects. Number one, climatic components and how they affect building designs. Number two, how to achieve thermal comfort in uh, building designs. Number three, how to achieve passive design and cooling using your building designs, how to go about sustainable development, and how to plan sites properly to increase user well-being and uh, make it environmentally friendly. Um, course grading and rules, the exam will be 70%, in class will be 30%. There is no mark for attendance, but if you don't attend up to 70%, you will not write exam. I said we will not have it all. And make sure you register the course. So let's begin. The climate system is a very complex system consisting of five main components. We have the atmosphere, the hydrosphere, the cyrosphere, the lithosphere, and the biosphere. And all these spheres are in interaction to produce what we call our climatic systems. But for the purposes of this course, we'll be focusing on mainly the atmosphere and the biosphere. The atmosphere consists of all the gases and all the spaces above the Earth's surface. And why the biosphere focuses on both land and sea where living things inhabit. For this course, our understanding of the climatic system will be limited to just the atmosphere and the biosphere. Now, I want to define some key terms before we proceed. One is weather. Weather is the atmospheric condition of a place over a very short period of time, so let's say minutes, hours, or days. The aggregation of weather over a long period of time is called climate. Climate are all permanent occurrences, so over a long period of time, climates can also change, and the term is referred to as climate change. I think that one is very basic. So let's go ahead and explain some of the major components and how our climate works. The two main elements that determine the climate of a place is the sun and the ocean. Let me explain. You see, the earth and the moon are almost the same distance from the sun, but you cannot live on the moon. The temperatures on the moon range from minus 100 degrees to plus 100 degrees in a space of 14 days. But on Earth, the average temperature is about 18 degrees Celsius. So let me see if I can explain the climate system briefly. When the sun ray really leaves the sun approaching the Earth, some of it gets reflected in our atmosphere, and majority of it gets into our oceans and the little part into the Earth's surface. Now the ocean makes up 70% of the Earth's surface, so it just makes sense that a lot of the heat coming from the sun is within the ocean. This heat in the ocean, develops loops both current and determine most of the weather around the world and then in long term determine the climate. Most of the heat in the ocean eventually gets reflected back into the atmosphere and through the atmosphere gets reflected back into space. In my estimation, I can say that the interaction between the sun and the ocean is what makes the Earth a habitable space. And the lack of oceans on the moon is what makes the moon a very inhabitable space. Because the ocean helps store the heat from the sun, circulate it around the Earth and then radiated back into the atmosphere. I'm going to link in a video in the description below that explains this phenomenon very easily and I hope you can understand it. Understanding the impact and amount of solar radiation within your local climate can enable architects to design for optimum thermal comfort and climate-friendly buildings. 
And that thing worthy of note in trying to understand this interaction between the Earth and the Sun is that the Earth is in constant orbit around its own axis and around the Sun. So it orbits its axis within a 24-hour period and it orbits the Sun within a 365-day period. Its orbiting around the Sun is at an inclined axis to the Sun. This inclined journey around the Sun gives rise to what we call seasons. So there are different seasons within a specific spot within a specific climate. This complex interaction between the Earth's its journey around the Sun and the ocean produces various phenomena that we use to determine the weather of a place and eventually the climate of a place. They include daylight, air movement and temperature, rainfall and humidity. And these four climatic components are very important in helping an architect understand the weather condition, the seasons and the climatic conditions of a place, which will enable him in turn to design energy efficient, comfortable houses for those people living in there. So in preparation for our lectures this week, I'm going to divide the class into groups and I'm going to make short presentation on the following. Number one, solar radiation. Number two, Earth's orbits that results in seasons and days. Number three, daylight. Number four, air movement and air temperature. Number five, humidity. Number six, rainfall. So we are going to make brief presentation on these items and I'm sure it's going to improve our understanding of how our complex climate system works. See you in class. Peace.